So you just got back an exam, test, or quiz. How'd you do? Now, if you did good, you're probably pretty excited. Congratulations, by the way. Now, if you didn't do so well, you're probably waiting to hear maybe somebody next to you say, oh crap, I didn't do so well. My parents are going to kill me. Or I had no idea what I was doing. The problems on the test were not what we were taught. That was very hard. I bombed it. And the reason why those are so good is because they're going to make us feel good. If we don't perform the way we wanted to, and it seems like everybody else is in the same boat, that is comforting for us. Somehow, sometime, being bad at math was acceptable. Not doing good in math became like an acceptable excuse. Not being a math person was like, hey, it's okay. But I want to take this video and this opportunity to challenge you to do something that most students do not know. And why do I know that? Well, because I was a teacher for 14 years inside the classroom, and I have given a ton of tests and quizzes and exams to my students. I know and I remember when students would follow this advice because it became very evident not only in their grade but also their understanding how they did after each test and exam. So if you're interested in improving not only your grade but also your understanding, you're going to want to do this one simple tip that I have for you after each and every assessment. So what is it? Well, it's really simple, guys. All it is to take that assessment, which is generally feedback of what you knew at a given certain time and study it. Study what you know. Study what you don't know. What did you struggle on? What did you not struggle in? Why did you struggle? Why did you not struggle? What were the problems you were able to do? What were the problems you were not able to do? Why were you not able to do them? You have to look at this from a different lens. The test, the grade is over. It's time to look at this and really say, how can I extract the most amount of value out of this assessment? And guess what? If you made multiple mistakes, that's actually okay because that's giving you feedback on how you can improve. And I know we're all conditioned to want to do our absolute best. If something's not an A plus or 100%, and especially if our friends are doing better than us, we're going to feel inferior and we're going to feel like we're not good enough and we're going to want to give up. I get it. I understand it. But I want you to understand that just like sports in the real world, you're not always going to win. You're not always going to be the best at everything. You're going to take some losses. And even though it can be embarrassing to get problems wrong or very frustrating where we just want to give up, it is so important to take this time to figure out what we did wrong and what we don't understand. Because the best thing about math, you still can learn the material and it's probably going to show up again. I always tell students the worst thing you can possibly do if you get a problem wrong is just to give up and just move on. If a problem was important enough to be shown on a test, a quiz, or an exam, it's important enough to show up again, not only maybe in another chapter, but maybe in another course. Another way I like to frame this, think about if the next day you showed up to class and your teacher gave you the exact same test how would you do? And if your answer is, I would do exactly the same, that's the problem. How embarrassing would it be if the teacher gave you back the answers, gave you back your assessment, gave you back your solutions, and you failed it for a second time? Now, I'm not telling you memorize the answers and then just regurgitate that on the second test, but what I'm saying is if you actually had the opportunity where the teacher would give you a full grade after releasing the exact same test questions, then you should get 100% on that retake. And that's how I want you to think about every single test or quiz that you get back. You need to put in the work and the effort into all all of the problems that you got wrong. Now, I'm telling you this for a couple reasons. One, I saw dramatic results from the students that did this inside of my classroom. This is what I required for my students to either have a quiz being dropped or for me to accept test corrections. There was a couple times that I actually did give the exact same test. And yes, it was embarrassing for those students that did not listen to this advice and failed the test the exact second time. Obviously, that was something brought up in some parent conferences. But I wanted to incentivize students to learn the material, not just think of of it as a snapshot of their understanding in time, but to always think of their learning as a journey. You're not always going to understand everything at every moment in time. You have to think of it as something you can keep on going back to, keep on refining. And as your brain collects more and more information to make better and better connections, you can understand the material on a deeper level. And hopefully the problems will make a little bit more sense as well. And hopefully you know that this is a little true because if you've ever taken a test and then two or three weeks later, you look back at that test and like, how did I get this question wrong? It was because your brain just needed a little bit more time to digest the information. Please do not give up when you get problems wrong or if you bomb a test. I know it is a horrible feeling to look at a test where you did horrible, especially if you have the demands of school, colleges, and your parents breathing down on your neck. The last thing you probably want to be doing is looking at all these examples of you being a failure and thinking that this is going to be okay. I remember failing some tests.
Yes, and I remember doing this on my own and I hated it. I absolutely hated looking at each and every answer and problem that I got wrong and seeing the mistakes that I made. However, I can tell you as a student and by seeing my own students do this exact same process, grades have been improved and understanding has skyrocketed. See, the thing is, if you're gonna separate yourself from other students, don't focus on getting 100% on every test, but focus on doing the best that you can possibly do and wherever you start to struggle or get questions wrong, keep that as your main focus to go back and continuously practice and understand how to do those problems. Because if you just move on and accept that was a hard problem or that was a hard test and everybody else in the class feels the exact same way, well, then you're just gonna be like everybody else. And your misunderstandings, those gaps in your knowledge will be exposed. If it's not in the next chapter, if it's not in the next semester or another class later down the road. So please do me a favor and don't be like the other 99% of the students out there. Review what you got wrong. Set a time to review those questions that you got wrong. Go to your teacher, go with a study group, spend a little time each and every week reviewing your tests and your quizzes. Because when we come back to this video after your next assessment, I want you to comment down below and let me know how this video helped improve your test grade. If you want more tips and advice on how to do better in your math class or tested quizzes, go ahead and check out the examples down below or go ahead and check out my next video I have for you here. Cheers.